Throughout history, Jews have been a part of and a part from the surrounding society. This is reflected in their languages from Judeo-Italian to Judeo-Arabic, similar to the surrounding language but with distinctive Jewish features. We see these trends in the Kurdish region where Jewish Neo-Aramaic was spoken. After the Jews were taken into the Babylonian captivity, many of the new writings were in Aramaic instead of Hebrew. This includes much of the books of Daniel and Ezra, along with famous prayers such as the Gadish, which were included in the prayer liturgy. The Assyrian alphabet, which we now know as the Hebrew alphabet, was also adopted at this time. Hundreds of years after the destruction of the temple, Jews continued speaking and writing in Aramaic, leading to the Talmud in Babylonia, Persia, the Zohar in Spain, and even songs like Chad Gadia in Germany. But Aramaic wasn't just a written language. From Zaho in the west to Sanandaj and Bijar in the east, Jewish communities developed the language for thousands of years, speaking it alongside more dominant languages as they rose and fell. The Jewish dialects of Aramaic, like other Jewish languages, include many loan words from Hebrew. But while many Jews learn Aramaic in order to study the Talmud, they wouldn't quite understand the Jewish Neo-Aramaic languages that have developed over the last 1500 years. Shifts in grammar, pronunciation, and vocabulary have changed Jewish Neo-Aramaic. For example, the dialects from Sanandaj and Urumieh in Iran include many words from Persian, Sorani Kurdish, Arabic, Hebrew, and Turkish, and even some of their grammar has been affected by those languages. <laughs> Jewish Neo-Aramaic is so different from Assyrian Christian Aramaic dialects that communities in the same towns would often not understand each other. Jews have many names for their Aramaic languages, including Lishana Noshan, or Lishan Didan, meaning our language, and Hosaya, or Hulaula, meaning Jewish. By the mid-20th century, most Aramaic-speaking Jews had fled upheavals and moved to Israel, Tehran, and the United States. There's even a tiny community of Aramaic-speaking Jews in Kazakhstan, who fled Iran in the last century and call themselves the Lakhluk Jews. Today, though there are hundreds of thousands of Jews from the Kurdish region, Jewish Neo-Aramaic is being replaced by Hebrew and English. While Jewish Neo-Aramaic is critically endangered, there are small revival efforts, especially in Israel. There are still living speakers of these important languages of the Middle East, so when we discuss Jewish languages, we should remember to include the original language of the Jewish diaspora, Aramaic. <laughs>